You're watching Access Minnesota. Here's Jim Dubois. Now here's more with Bill Swanson, author of Black, White, Blue, The Assassination of Patrolman Sackett. During the initial investigation, and indeed uh, throughout much of the next 35 some years, there was always a scarcity of physical evidence. Uh, they had the bullet that killed Officer Sackett. They had a recording of the woman who made the call about her sister giving birth. Where did the investigation lead in the first place? Who were the initial suspects? The police were pretty sure they knew who did it almost from the get-go. Uh, there had been a group of young African Americans, and I mean young, guys in their teens and late teens, early 20s, uh, who were very actively uh, spouting the, the Black Panther line. The Black Panthers were very active, based in California at the time, um, insisting that their community was uh, under the thumb of a white establishment represented by the police. They called the police oppressors. Uh, they railed against what they considered to be police brutality against black people. And um, uh, Ronald Reed uh, was a young, articulate, charismatic, and very vocal uh, recent graduate of Central High School. Uh, and he was, he was in, the, in the police eye right from the beginning. The police had informants, uh, understand, and, and they had been watching this uh, activity and these, uh, these speeches and these demonstrations, et cetera, for a long time. Uh, the, the J. Edgar Hoover considered the Black Panthers the, the greatest danger to uh, American security at the time. And local police officers, state police officers and, and agencies were all alert to what they called black militancy. And Ron Reed and, and Larry Clark, his buddy, and several other uh, young black men, mainly, uh, were, were the St. Paul spokespersons, as it were, of this, of this black militancy. So they had an eye on them from the, from the beginning, especially Ron Reed. So essentially, two years after the shooting, 1972, the case goes cold. The case goes cold. What happened years later to resurrect that case? The summer of 1994, there was a shooting, I'm sure a lot of uh, our viewers will remember, uh, of two young police officers, uh, Ron Ryan Jr. and uh, Tim Jones, and Tim Jones' dog. He was a canine officer. This was some fugitive from Iowa who was simply trying to elude escape, uh, but he killed both of these officers, one lovely August morning in 1994. In the aftermath of that shocking case, um, a, a Minneapolis St. Paul um, reporter, Tom Hauser of Channel 5, was looking at old cases involving police shootings, fatal police shootings, and realized that Jim Sackett's case had never been solved. Nobody had been punished for that case. Uh, he looked up and somehow found, he never divulged how he did it, he, he, he found Connie Trimble living in Denver, which was her original hometown. She was driving a city bus in Denver. So he goes out there with a film crew, sits down in her kitchen with her, of course she's surprised, she's a middle-aged woman by this time, uh, and she tells him that, well, Ronnie Reed was with me the night I made that call. She had never said that before, even though she thought she had. And the uh, St. Paul police are, they're, they're thunderstruck by this. So they send two detectives out to talk to Connie Trimble. And Connie again says, yeah, Ronnie was with me. I thought I had made that clear early on. Um, she wouldn't tell him any more. And so while the investigation kind of lumbered on for a while, uh, the St. Paul police did not have a cold case unit at the time. They were struggling with an uptick, a significant uptick in homicides at the time. This is when Minneapolis was known as Murderapolis and St. Paul was nearly as bad with the influx of gangs and so forth. Uh, they simply didn't have time to pursue it. As you mentioned, a cold case is never easy to solve. In this case, 35 some years had transpired since 
the crime and the subsequent trials. What challenges did that give the investigators? Obviously, you have witnesses who may not uh, be in good health anymore. Some may have died or may be in the process of dying. Uh, sometimes evidence goes missing. Uh, you also have 35 years and memories fade. What challenges did that present to the investigators? Well, you just described it perfectly, Jim. Those are all the challenges that, that, uh, that make a cold case like this uh, very, very difficult, if not impossible. In addition to what you mentioned, the passing of time, the death of witnesses, including a very key witness in this case named Kelly Day, um, there was there was the so-called uh, uh, code of silence within the black community. Uh, after a century or more of, of police oppression, from their point of view, uh, they simply were not about to talk to the police, uh, even in a homicide investigation such as this. It, it was just you, you simply did not talk to the police. But again, these cops led by Donaski, a diminutive officer named Jane Mead, and a, a guy with this, this incredible memory and, and uh, uh, intelligence named Scott Duff, they, they manage simply by, by dint of persistence. Uh, and conversations again and again and again with some key people, including the aforementioned Eddie Garrett. Um, they got them to not say, yes, I saw Ronnie Reed pull the trigger. There was never an eyewitness who said that. But there was a, a finally a, a, a cadre of witnesses who were willing to tell the court that they heard Ronnie Reed and Larry Clark and others talking about killing a cop, not specifically, not, not a, a cop by name, but a cop. They put Ronnie Reed and Larry Clark at the scene of the likely shooting uh, immediately before and immediately after the fact. Uh, and of course, the key piece of evidence, the, the one piece of evidence really, was that recording of Connie Trimble making that call. They, they were each convicted of conspiracy to commit first degree murder and aiding and abetting first degree murder. The state did not have to prove who literally pulled the trigger. Uh, if you were there when it happened, you're as guilty as the, as the actual shooter. More on the lasting impact of the Sackett case when Access Minnesota returns. Access Minnesota will return after these messages.